Hi right there guys, let's talk about hydration. So let's talk about water essentially, and also sports drinks. Now yes, you can survive without food for about a week. I wouldn't suggest it, but you can. But it's only going to be a few days without water. So absolutely as important, if not more important than food, when you're doing your diet plans. Now two litres is the magic number of water that we approximately lose but it's going to depend on your body size, it's going to depend on how much training or exercise you do, but certainly around two litres is going to be how much you're going to need to replace, but I'm going to imagine it's going to be a lot more when you're doing a sports-specific diet plan. And the advice is, rather than drinking this all at once, you do it regularly and in small amounts, and that's the best way to keep you hydrated. Certainly a lot of people don't do that, and they become dehydrated very quickly. You can always spot the serious sports people when you're in a classroom or anywhere in life because they'll have a bottle of water very close at hand. Now, let's quickly mention dehydration as we did just touch on it there. There are many different signs and symptoms. Now, the best one for everyone to look at is the colour of your urine, which is very nice, I know. But generally, if it's a nice clear straw colour, then you're well hydrated. And anything darker, you are moving into dehydration. However, this is your job now to look, look up and research these signs and symptoms so you can spot when someone or yourself is dehydrated. And it doesn't help. It reduces performance when you're dehydrated and it certainly affects your ability to sweat. It reduces your blood flow because that's where a lot of the water goes in your blood and where you lose it from. So staying hydrated and avoiding dehydration is incredibly important. Another word we may come across is hyperhydration. It's a technique where you drink more water than normal before an event, certainly a, an endurance event or an event that's going to be very hot, and you try and stave off the effects of dehydration as long as possible. Now, just some general tips on fluid intake. As I mentioned, two litres to two and a half is your magic number, or that may vary. Um, Pre-event, again, try and get some water on board before you get dehydrated. That's very important. And in the event, if you can, get regular small amounts. It's going to be hard depending on the game. Say in football, you'd have to wait for breaks in the game. And certainly the more intense you exercise, the harder it is for the body to absorb that water because the blood flow is elsewhere. So it's hard, but try your best. Now, after the event, there's a very simple calculation. If you lose one litre of water, that's one kilo lost. So you can weigh yourself and work out how much water you've lost and then make sure you replace at least that amount back and then obviously check your urine colour. That's a nice job to do. OK, so what about the choices? Well, water is obviously a good choice because that is what we're talking about. But avoid chilled water. That's something you may not know. It's actually easier and quicker for the body to absorb warmed or room temperature water as you intake it because that's what the body wants to do. It doesn't want to take cold water into your system and shock yourself. because You'd have to warm it up first in the stomach before it's absorbed. Sports drinks are very popular. You've probably heard of isotonic drinks. It just means the amount of glucose, carbohydrate if you like, that's dissolved in the water. Isotonic is around 6 grams per 100 mils. Um, hypotonic is a lower concentration of glucose, around 2 grams per 100 mils. And if we're going up to 10 grams, then we're talking about hypertonic. And these amounts will vary, but have a look on your sports drink, see how many grams per 100 mils, and you can see what sort of drink it is. Now, the lower the concentration, the quicker the absorption of water and the glucose. Six is an area where the body can absorb the glucose quite well, hence the name isotonic. Hypertonic, it's going to be slower. But certainly, if you do it yourself and try and dissolve 10 grams of sugar in 100 mils of water, it's not that easy. It's an awful lot of sugar, so you may not need it. So check the drinks you're having and check they're appropriate. If you don't need glucose intake, then there's no need to drink sports drinks. In certain sporting events, it may help to get some glucose on board quickly and dissolved in a sports drink. But a lot of the time, water is the best option. OK, until next time.